Hello, I'm Jerry from Quilt Crazy. Uh, this is a short video on how to recalibrate your cube out with your frame. Uh, if you aren't sure whether you need to be calibrated, uh, I've also done a video on uh, how to check your calibration. This is an update from a previous one that I did. Uh, much simpler, much easier, uh, and uh, I'll walk you through each of the steps. Uh, also, there is a special offer from the Cubot folks on laser. Look in the description for this video and also at the end of the video. So let's get on with the calibration. And start up Cubot. Because this is going to be a quick, easy way to do your calibration and get it as accurately as possible. It's, you can do it by using the uh, calibration factor that comes on the package of wire. Uh, although um, this is really a simple way to do it and it's going to be more accurate. It is, you're only going to be able to calibrate for the X axis, excuse me. Uh, you cannot calibrate for the Y axis. This is why, uh, again, you must use the same wire on the X axis as you do on the Y axis. So if you're using uh, the standard on the X, you got to use standard on the Y. If you're doing heavy duty, you got to mix, got to be heavy, heavy duty. And if you're doing a super heavy duty, it's got to be the same on both sides. Once you calibrate the uh, X axis, the, X, the Y axis will be in calibration because you're using the same wire. So the little motor wheel, when you move it, it's moving the same amount of space. Now, in order to do this, uh, it's not necessary to even have a quilt on your frame. Uh, one of my previous video, uh, I showed you how to put the leaders together and tape down the tape. And this is much, much easier to do. Um, you can calibrate without even disturbing a quilt that you're already working on. Uh, so if you have to change a wire in the middle of it, uh, this is just a really easy way to do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the back side of our frame where you would normally do pantographs. Um, since you usually have all that space available, uh, why not use it? That way we can use just about the entire width of our frame. The longer the distance you use for do the calibration, the more accurate the calibration will be. So um, if you have a laser for your... Uh, pantograph, that's great. If you have uh, an extra laser, that's great too. Uh, you probably would not want to use your uh, uh, regular laser if you have one uh, that you use for quilting because you're going to have to move it and you don't want to have to reset everything every time. Uh, especially if you use uh, Lighten Ups, which is the best laser around. Uh, you don't want to unstick it and then have to restick it again. Uh, so there are a couple ways of doing this. Uh, First of all, you want to use a metal tape. Uh, if you have a regular carpenter's yo-yo tape, you know, one of those pull-out tapes, they work great. Um, and I'm going to do this, even though I have lasers on the front and the back of my machine, I'm going to do this uh, for a way that you can do it without using a laser at all. Uh, your accuracy is going to be fine uh, because we're only doing one measurement one time, and we don't care if our device, which I'll show you in a minute, moves after we're done because we're not going to use it anymore. So what I've done is you can see from the picture here as I move it up that I've taken a standard number two lead pencil, I sharpened it, you know, just pretty sharp, uh, and taped it to the side of my carriage right above my yo-yo tape. Um, I would suggest not ever, ever, ever using uh, invisible tape or scotch tape or any of those that style tape anywhere on any sewing machine or quilting machine. Uh, it's, it leaves a sticky goo. Uh, sometimes it works too good and it's too hard to get off. Uh, use painter's tape or uh, masking tape or even uh, uh, black electrical tape, uh, which is what I've done here just for convenience. But what I've done is I've laid out uh, the tape measure. I've taped it down so it's not going to move. And I've taped the pencil to the carriage with a point down so I can tell how far I've moved. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, first thing we're going to do, once we've got all of this set up, is we're going to go to quilting options. <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to reset my calibration. I'm not sure whether it's really important whether you reset it or not. Uh, but we're going to select calibrate. And the instructions say uh, two points so you can read it yourself. So we're going to say start, and the first I want you to do is select a point. So I'm going to move my head so that the point of my pencil is right at 
the 10 inch mark. And I'm going to set my first point. Now I'm going to move my head um, across the back. And in this case, I want to move it even slower than you might normally move it. You don't want to be, you don't want to be uh, super critical slow, but you want to go pretty slow. Uh, we want to make sure that that little wheel that's turning inside the motor uh, has enough time for it to calibrate uh, how many times it's turned and how far it's turned. So we're going to keep moving it all the way across down here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And yes, I always move my head this slow when I'm calibrating. And not much faster than, than this anytime I have to move it when, when Qbot is active. All right, so I'm going to stop here at 120 inches on the tape. So I have I'm at 120 inches. I started at 10. So I'm going to set my next point. Now it wants to know how far I've moved. So uh, 120 minus 10 is 110 inches. So I'm going to enter 110 inches. I'm done. Calibration is done. That simple. And again, the longer the distance you use to do the calibration, the more accurate your calibrations are going to be. If you try and do this and you only use about 12 inches and you're off a sixteenth of an inch, um, a sixteenth of an inch of 12 inches versus um, doing it over 8 feet, it's quite a difference. You can be off quite a bit and not know it. Um, so that's how you calibrate. Once you've calibrated, uh, then you can go through and recheck your uh, calibration when you're done if you feel like, as we saw in the first part of this video, in either the X or the Y, you know, it doesn't matter, they'll both be the same. Uh, but that's a quick, easy way to doing it without having to disturb your quilt at all. I uh, hope this is useful. Um, again, this is Jerry from uh, Quilt Crazy, and uh, we hope to see you again later. Thanks. The fine folks at Lighten Up Technologies, the Cubot folks, are offering a special deal on their laser with a special link that you'll find in the description. Uh, the special offer is free shipping on any laser purchased through this special link through March of 2022. The only caveat to this is it's only available for U.S. shipping. It cannot be used for international shipping and it must be done by March of 2022 and only available with the special link. Uh, I believe that every Cubot person should have one of the Cubot lasers. It's a great laser. It's a focused, battery operated, lasts a long time on the battery, and is rechargeable. Uh, I use it on every single quilt that I do, and I do over 100 quilts a year. Uh, I also, on my long arm, have a needle laser that shines uh, a laser right where the needle goes through the fabric. I use the Cubot one rather than that one because it works so much better and it's so much easier to use. So look in the description and use that link. Um, I'm not affiliated directly with Cubot or at least Lighten Up Technologies, and I get no compensation out of this. This is strictly a special deal for you to save money on the shipping.